Hey guys, welcome to Southeast Virginia Bushcrafting. Tonight, what I'm going to do is going to be a multi-part video. I'm not sure exactly how many videos it's going to take, but I um, went to Lowe's and they had 10 ounce 9 by 12 canvas tarps. So, what we're going to do is, I've been wanting a canvas tarp for a long time. Everybody knows the use of a canvas tarp. Um, go a long ways. Shelter, um, ground cover, the whole nine yards. Um, so we're going to take the tarp um, and not only am I going to turn this into an 8x8 um, treated waterproof tarp, but I'm also going to make a haversack for myself and for my wife Donna. So uh, first off I would like to thank Snow Walker um, and his video. Uh, you can uh, search YouTube. Uh, he's also um, in my channel. Uh, if I can figure it out on YouTube I'll put a link uh, to his channel for the video that he put out that gave me the idea of making this tarp. Uh, when he did his he did his totally by hand. He did a great job. Um, and his he had two different waterproofing methods that he showed. Um, he chose to use one particular method. And I'm going to use the other method um, that he shows on his video. So I'm going to go ahead. Well, I'll go ahead and show you what I got right now. I've got the, the uh, canvas, which is the, like I said, it's the the 10 ounce uh, 9 by 12 that I'm going to turn into an 8 by 8. I've got five yards of nylon um, strapping material. Uh, the tarp we got at Lowe's, the strapping material I got at Walmart. It was 89 cents a yard, and I'm going to use this to put loops at the uh, at the corners and around the edge of the uh, the tarp this particular tarp does not have grommets in it um, we don't like grommets because they tear out uh, the loops tend to be stronger and give you more versatility um, in my opinion when it comes to your tarps um, pair of scissors but <laughs> if they if they're strong enough to cut through the canvas if not I also have a uh, rotary uh, cutter a lot of quilters and um, seamstress or uh, you know people that make clothes curtains things uh, like that um, even leather workers uh, use these very handy um, I've got E6000 glue which is waterproof, uh, non-flammable, um, paintable, um, kind of like, it's kind of like a shoe glue. Um, I might, might not, uh, I've been debating on whether I want to use this on my edges when I roll them over, use this glue before I stitch and also use it on my loops. Um, I'm still debating, kicking that idea around um, just to add durability to the loops. Straight pins um, for doing your edges once you make your folds um, and you get your edge, you're going to have to pin them in place because uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm not doing this primitive by hand. Um, I'm actually going to use a sewing machine and a drywall T-square so I can get my nice long straight cuts and um, everybody knows the price of a good canvas tarp uh, waterproof the ballpark uh, I think is I think a good one I've seen you know somewhere between 
80, a hundred dollars. Uh, I've seen some higher and I have seen some lower. Uh, so far this setup right now as it sits the tarp cost me $29 at Lowe's the um, strapping material that I'm going to use for my loops cost me five times 89 you, know, you do the math I'm not real good at math so less than five bucks All right, so we're right at $35 uh, with everything um, and I'm gonna do it myself so I'm gonna go ahead and cut away now and get set up and as I go along I'm not gonna bore you with the whole um, the, uh, <laughs> like I'm not gonna show you me cutting out everything and stitching everything you know I'll show you bits and pieces of what I'm doing uh, tonight pretty much is going to be the cutout on the tarp. I'm going to um, get the cutouts and uh, ready for the haversacks and I will probably you know time allotted go ahead and get the the edges stitched up and the haversacks stitched but the waterproofing will be tomorrow so but you won't know the difference because I'm gonna be in a, a video that it's gonna look like it's all done at one time for you guys so anyways I'll be back with you as soon as I get set up alright guys so just so you know where we're at so far I've taken the canvas laid it out on the table and measured out Eight foot, folded the, made my marks on the uh, the canvas, folded it in half, uh, so each half is four foot. It's actually I went one extra inch, uh, that way I would have enough canvas to fold over twice to get my hem. So I'm at four foot eight inches, and we have pinned it, and I have marked on it just for uh, future purposes when I'm doing my uh, sewing and doing my loops red lines I've marked every two foot on the canvas all the way down we've got a pin now so we've got a nice straight edge I'm gonna cut it off fold it over and do my hem when I get to that step after I've got it cut then I'll come back to you. Alright guys, so I've got my edges cut and I have my um, seams rolled over and pinned. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I left enough material when I cut it to give me uh, a double over so I was able to roll the edge of the tarp over one time and then roll it over a second time kinda like if you were to look at the bottom of uh, a pair of blue jeans um, you can see that uh, that's the edge so we've got two edges that are cut and pinned and you know as we go along right now like this has uh, come untucked but you can hear the sewing machine going in the background uh, my wife is working the sewing machine and um, you know as we go along and as she goes along uh, stitching or sewing um, you know she's tucking it in and um, making sure that everything is uh, fitting nice and tight. Um, the stitch that she's used on the machine uh, is kind of a zigzag 
um, style. We're, this is our first time, you know, this is that uh, of doing this. So and this is actually the first time we've used in the sewing machine. So it's putting a, a pretty tight seam in it. Um, it looks like it's going to be really strong and durable. It's uh, zigzagging back and forth. Um, and the uh, the canvas is, is giving her a fit. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a look at um, you know what we've got uh, at this point so far. We started down at this corner here, stitching, and now I'm going to go ahead and get off of here and help her with this material, because uh, one person trying to control the material by themselves is, is pretty tough uh, with the sewing machine. So this is where we're at so far, and once we get this done, I'll come back and uh, show you where we're at then. Alright guys, we're back. Uh, the last stage I showed, we had the um, the edges pinned up, getting ready to sew. And this is how it came out. All the way around. We folded it over twice. And this is how the edge came out. Um, it's the first time that we've actually used the sewing machine. Actually, it's the first time we have actually sewed. So, um, I think what we got done didn't turn out half bad. Uh, it's pretty tight, heavy duty stitch. This was the factory stitch here and this is the stitch that we got so honestly in my opinion the stitch that we did um, if we would decide I've been kind of debating on whether I'm going to run a second stitch a little bit closer to the uh, inside folded edge or to the outside edge um, this here is actually the outside edge it's folded over this is the inside edge here where we stitch close to the edge I don't necessarily think that we would need a stitch closer to the outside because this right here is going through one two three layers of the canvas so that should hold perfectly well and also, since uh, the last clip, since I cut away, um, we started putting on the loops. Uh, this is a learning process. Uh, like I said again, first time using this uh, sewing machine. The, um, I think this was the first corner loop that we did. And um, as you can tell, it's uh, yeah needs some improvement, but um, it's definitely not going anywhere. It's uh, heavy duty. I think we've covered all the the weak points, uh, you know, where the wind would uh, pull once it's uh, strung up. Uh, you know, the the wind's going to pull it and yank it around, depending on on. Uh, on how the tarp is set up um, but as you go along and the more you do something uh, you learn a little bit so this is one of the sides this is uh, two foot in from one of the corners and we changed our stitch up a little bit then we found out how to this is another uh, side 
this is actually at the middle point of the tarp the the four foot um, part uh, the the half point in the tarp <clears throat> Uh, here we are two foot away from the halfway point and then we've got another corner so as you can see the more we did um, the more we learned um, this one here we actually used uh, a double stitch it's a, a zigzag stitch and then you put the sewing machine in reverse which we didn't know how to do at first and you could go back over it with another zigzag uh, stitch so it's a uh, definite learning process the um, this particular uh, tarp is eight foot by eight foot and it is going to have a tie point a loop every two feet that way there is a loop at the halfway points um, on the tarp no matter which way you decide to use it uh, there will be a loop at each corner and there will be a loop in between from the corner to center there's also going to be a loop all the way around the tarp I had 16 total I had um, six yards of the uh, polyester um, material that I'm using for the loop that I showed you when we first started and I cut them into tw uh, 12 inch sections or 12 inch uh, strips and from the edge in is three inches and we folded it over in a fashion that they will lay side by side and as you can tell the loop is like this that way if we run a pole through it a you know, tree uh, limb or branch through it um, it's got plenty of space and the corners will match up with the uh, the center loops for running uh, poles through it. So this is where we're at right now, guys. Um, we are stitching our loops on. We've got two sides completely done, and we have two more to go. I need to measure out um, the two foot uh, marks for my wife because she's actually the one that's doing the stitching um, you know this can be done by hand but I chose to do it by machine and it was kind of a twofold my wife wanted to learn how to use her um, sewing machine for future projects because when we're done doing this what we plan on making are two haversacks out of the material that was left over and we had plenty of material left over from the 9 by 12 tarp um, to make two haversacks. They're going to be uh, 12 by 14 um, standard uh, haversack made out of the same material. Um, it's going to be treated the same way with the um, turpentine, linseed oil, and uh, wax to waterproof it. Uh, both the canvas and the haversacks will be dyed. Um, haven't decided on the color yet. I'm not sure if we're going to go with a, uh, a dark brown or a light brown or a green, a you know, dark or light green for the tarp. And then the haversacks, I think we're going to go ahead and go with a, uh, a woodland green. green. So I haven't, haven't quite made up our minds, but uh, it's a work in progress. And as we go, we're learning. Um, you know, there's only uh, one way to learn and that's to actually put your hands on something and do it um, you know to buy these things sometimes um, depending on who you use 
um, or, or where you buy uh, your outdoors equipment from can be very pricey so we're trying to save a little money do it ourselves and hopefully come up with something that we can be proud of and uh, you can do the same uh, I've, this is the first for me um, like I said uh, snow walker um, I, I watched his video I watched a couple other, a couple other uh, videos on how to make these and um, it was very helpful and I will be posting a link to his um, YouTube channel as well so alright guys I'll see you after we get the loops done and I think that's gonna be it for this weekend uh, I'm not going to have enough time to actually dye um, the material and um, get it waterproof this weekend. So stay tuned and I'll show you what the product looks like after we got all the loops stitched in. Thanks.